I've unlocked it. Okay, here we go. <laughs> big breaths, big breaths. Oh, what the hell? What's up, you two? Welcome back. My name is Oshi Kurozu. I'm here for you for some more of the glass staircase. We played this game last week. You guys were like, yeah, I want to see more of it. So I heard you guys again. Uh, I'm really listening to your guys' engagement, especially on this more smaller uh, output stuff. Uh, if you guys really want to see more of this, if you guys want to see more of this stuff, like it on the video. Tell me in the comment section below you guys are liking this. It's telling me that you guys are liking this, and that's perfect. I really appreciate all that stuff. Um, let's go. So we're playing a new character. I just started playing this episode, and you know what I found? Is that the video? There's a remastered, and it looks really good. <laughs> it looks really good. So we're gonna play with this setting here. Um, we're playing Dorothy, okay? And uh, I didn't get very much done, um, but I did realize that I had started recording without recording the video. So um, <laughs> we're just gonna dive back into this. So here we go. Attention all, attention all. This is the estates. Dorothy, if you've already taken your tablet, please report to the dining hall. We've prepared a new task for you. The letter on the table will have further directions. Remember, good girls take their medicine, good girls do their chores, good girls go home. And that is all, ladies. So welcome back to the glass staircase. Um, again, so we, I just found out, I know we had to take our medication because this character, she has to. Um, we're the last two, I guess. I guess we are. So I'm gonna be doing some talking through the intro. So again, uh, I'm gonna say one more time, welcome back guys. I'm so happy you guys enjoyed this. This game is super fun to play. Um, and we're gonna play through as Dorothy now. So on we go downstairs. Um, I kind of like the old gritty look, but I also really enjoy this one as well. So if it's your first time here and you guys don't know what's going on, I definitely encourage you guys to watch the previous glass staircase video. It does go into some depth that I'm probably going to forget to mention during this video, but I just wanted to talk about it. So anyways, we're playing in this house, this manor. I don't know where we are, but it's just this giant house and that base in the background is super unsettling. Um, let's read the letter and then I'm going to keep talking about it. So Dorothy. We have begun entering the later year, and as such, our daylight hours are getting shorter. We'll be entrusting you to light all of the manor's candles before nightfall, as well as stuffing them out in the morning. This is a large responsibility, but we trust that you are more than capable of it. We all must do our part here. You're such a responsible young lady, Dorothy. Surely your family will be glad to have you home. So the estate gives all these young girls a job. And then it turns out every time the young ladies freaking disappear uh, after doing their job. Like the very first lady we had, she, um, is there a door back here? No. Okay. Off we go. Um, so the very first lady we had, she had to do, what was her job? I can't remember it. She was the head. She had to trim the hedges. And as soon as she went out the front door, blah, got the biggest jump scare of my freaking life. Um, second girl had to go pick up a parcel from the, from the freaking maze. And, uh, so she, she did that. And then we met this giant crab monster in the maze, which is weird. Uh, and then she apparently got blasted. I don't know why we're playing these girls. I don't know what the points of them are. I don't know. I love that we can bump into those. Bump. Uh, I don't really know what's going on in this game. All we know, a box of matches. Yes, we need those. We're gonna need those. Like the can. So we got a cool new uh, howling going on in the background of the game audio. I don't know if it's like the wind or what it is. But anyways, so yeah, we play these girls in this manner and I don't know what the purpose of them is. Oh, what is going on with it? A wet box. The contents have been removed. So whatever, okay, so that's the second girl's box. And they took it and they cleaned it out. <laughs> what is that sound? What was it? I don't know. Okay, we're good, we're good, we're good. 
Anyways, um, so we're just gonna light some candles. Is it weird to, now, okay, is it weird to me, is it weird to you guys that we're lighting candles? Seems it's locked to the, lead, leads out to the porch, it's locked, okay. Is it weird to you guys that we're lighting candles at night in behind locked doors? I don't know, it's weird. So anyways, that's the first part of the game is we're playing these young girls in this game. Now we don't know, again, I don't know what the purpose of them is, but the other thing that we found out is that there's other like supporting characters now we haven't met them, but there's like a character named, um, he's a doctor and he, all these people that I'm mentioning from this point forward um, have served in the war. All right, I don't know what the, Oh man, I don't want to go. I just want to go see, uh, okay. No, we gotta go. Okay. Let's go. Oh, there's a candle there. Um, oh man, don't jump on me. Is there anything over here though? I don't see any items. Okay. We're good. Let's get the freak out of here. I don't, <laughs> this game gets me so nervous, man. All right, if we're gonna die, we're gonna die, whatever. Okay, we're good, I think. It's locked, okay. And then this was the piano room where the first girl went and got the key from the front door. So anyways, all these characters I mentioned in the future from now on are, have been to the war and they've come back, you know, they're, they're back homes now. Uh, one of these people was a doctor and the doctor has spent a bunch of time apparently um, practicing his medicine and his sciences and stuff like that. But actually what he's been doing is he's been like building machines. He's been building these weird machines in like his basement. I don't know where it is. I don't know if it's this manor. This manor does get mentioned from somebody else talking to uh, somebody that they knew. Uh, okay, I think we're good there. Can we go out the front door? No, probably not. Oh my God, we can go out the front door. This is the front door, right? Is there a candle out here? Can't be a candle out here. Why would you light a candle outside? Anyways, so he he come home from the war and he just started building these machines and his wife is like, what the heck is going on, dude? And nobody seems to know why, but anyways, he's been doing it. And then other people have been having these, whoa. Seems to go under the house. Yeah, that's probably where the freaking machine is being built. Other people like know about this machine. They've been seeing it in like fever dreams and stuff. They're like we have to go to this place. We have to go to the manor. We have to see the machine. We have to go. So that's kind of like what's been happening there. Oh my God, we can go right out to the back. And we've, we've talked about two, we've seen two people for sure. Um, cause there was like a lieutenant from the war and he was like, he was mailing one of his subordinates in the war and, uh, look at that. We can actually see the lights in the house. That's so cool. It was like, I don't know if you've been hearing the voices and if you've been seeing the stuff, but me and a bunch of people have, and, uh, you know, the heat, the heat is crazy and we're, we're going to this place where we see the machines. This is probably not a good idea. <laughs> this is probably not a good idea, but we're gonna check it out. Uh, we're at the, the hedge maze here. Okay, I feel like it's gonna be a bunch of walking, so if I see something, I'll let you guys know. Oh, we can't, Never mind. we can't even go any further than this. This just stops here. Okay, well, I guess I'll have to run back to the house. Yeah, because it just stops here. We can't do any more. Okay, nothing in the hedge maze, I guess. Okay, we're back in the house and I've had some time to listen to the background ambience of the game. And it's like, woo, 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 woo. It's some pretty creepy stuff. Uh, it sounds like ghosts going woo in the background. <laughs> so anyways, that's all we know about the game is that there's some set of characters who are talking about a machine being built. The doctor is actually making the machine. Um, okay, let's light the candle. I see something. Um, it seems very culty. A note, a wet note. Read it, yes. Oh, okay. And the Lord saith unto me, go out into the masses and preach my word, for the kingdom of heaven is but a lie. 
Indeed, tis a lie, a lie. The god of our forefathers is dead, and in his place we will awaken our new lord, our better lord. From below, below, we will arise and take the smoldering world of man. My brothers and sisters, our salvation lies in the Dr. Edward Sullivan, prophet of the new word. For our lives do we owe to him. All right, so there you go. Um, <laughs> that's kind of exactly what I was just talking about. There's this like weird culty thing that happened. I don't know, something happened during the war and caused these people to just flip a switch. And now this is where it's at. So again, these little girls, I don't know if they're, I don't know if they're machine, if they're like fuel for the machine, you know, like virgin sacrifices. I don't know, but whatever it is, it's super creepy and we keep losing our girls. So we're going to hop into this and see what's going on. Uh, I think we've kind of explored the whole downstairs except for here, but we've already been here. A dusty vase. All right. How you doing? Dorothy. Okay, let's go. Uh, I guess we're going back upstairs, I think. Yeah. Yeah, because this is the room. Yeah, okay. We're, we full circled the house. Now, the problem with coming upstairs is that, um, well, that's the room there, but I don't want to go back there yet. Did I just hear something? I don't know. Could just be the outside zone. It just could be the outside zone. Um, there was like dust. See, like right around here, there was dust on the floor, right? The dust that was like falling through the floorboards. Okay, but that's the balcony. We can't go there. Oh, man. Oh, no. You've unlocked it. Okay, here we go. <laughs> big breaths. Big breaths. This is where we've seen the dust on the floor, right? It was here. Okay. All right, we're good. For now, let's uh, light the candle. Oh my gosh. No, 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 no! Heal yourself? Sure. I feel fine. What? Okay, a journal, read it. So this is usually, um, this is usually the journals are coming from the wife of the doctor. So we've already read a bunch of these, so I'm just going to keep reading them. Uh, I really want to read through as much of this stuff as I can. There just seems to be a lot of lore in this world. October 1st, 1919, a crowd of strange men and women have congregated outside the mansion for days. There must at least be 20 or more of them. They all have almost glassy eyes and the palest skin. They don't seem to eat nor drink, nor do they react to the bitter winds outside. It's October, so it's cold out there. They stand about, shuffling here or there. Sometimes they sit, sometimes they sleep, but mostly they just stand, trying to look inside the windows or knock on the door. Bartholomew and William have already quit because of it. I can't pretend to blame them. I've asked them what they want, and they just tell me they want to see Edward. Why do these people want to see my husband? He won't even see me, let alone strangers. I've only seen him once since August. He was moving boxes through the back door of the manor. He yelled at me to get away, and I did as he said. I'm afraid I have nowhere to go. October 2nd. My God, I heard gunshots. Not from outside, but from the basement. Six shots and agitated yelling from my husband. I and the servants, brave enough to venture out of their rooms, rushed to the basement door and called out for him. There was a terrible banging at the door, then four more shots. I heard something fall down the stairs before my husband screamed at us to get away. He almost sounded scared. Or worse, relieved. I can't just keep pretending that there's something I can salvage from this. Whatever he's doing is only growing in scale and the horrible hum form of this damn machine is merely the chorus to this tragedy that I now call our life. God, Edward, please. November 8th. Maybe what I knew of my husband and his work was always a lie. I want to believe that something changed in him, perhaps during the war, perhaps in his need to find an end to this plague, as we understood it. We used to speak of all kinds of things for our future, and maybe it was simple, perhaps even idealized, but they were a dream that we could both see so clearly. I can't seem to see that dream anymore. 
The world was buried beneath nothing but the agony I felt when I last saw his cold, dead eyes. Eyes not far removed from the gangs of shambling lunatics that gather at the doors of all hours. Perhaps there is a new illness that I nor any of our help has heard of. It's not as if, I, as if I've had the opportunity to leave this prison in so long. The whole world could be entrenched in another great war, as for as far as I could know. A prison. That's how far from those dreams the future I've gone. The home that we were to grow together has become nothing more than a prison that I live a waking nightmare in. Perhaps that waking nightmare is preferable to the ones I see at night, on the rare occasion that the heat doesn't return, shaking the every fiber awake. My every fiber awake. <laughs> There is no doubt in my mind that he can no longer see the future we once spoke so wistfully of. I doubt he can see much of anything anymore. Nothing beyond the hellish engine he's brought into our home. At first, I'd been able to ignore the abominable sins that my husband has brought into our home, but with each night there are new, terrible sounds, some mechanical, some horribly human, all completely unnatural. I am no doctor, nor shall I ever hope to become one. But the godless acts Edward has begun practice, participating in, and the droves of mumbling madmen that now gather at our yard in some kind of perverse congregation, tell me that there are no longer a hope in my heart that my husband is any more of a man of science. If there was such a hope, it died with whatever abominations he has taken to shooting in the dead of night. I no longer know if I fear my husband, but I am certain that I fear whatever the thing that has replaced him is. Edward has allowed himself to be taken to hell. And I will doubtlessly be forced to follow. So if that don't kind of shed some light on the situation, if you guys are here for the first time, then that's what's going on. Wait, we have lamps? I just noticed we have lamps in the dresser. Oh, I don't want to open this door, man. Wait, is there something over there? No, that's just the, okay. Something was banging on the door. We're dead. Dorothy, you're dead. Can you jump through the floor or something? No. Okay, Dorothy, you're done, foe. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, we're alive. Okay, let's go. We're gonna go back to the room back to sleep. Pretend like nothing happened. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. I like how there's a med kit on the bed and it's like, do you want to heal yourself? How would we have hurt ourselves? That's interesting. Because if you press escape, there's actually a status. Our status is fine. But I think the status is always just like a... It's locked. I'm not allowed back in. No, don't do that. I'm not allowed back in. I got all the, I'm pretty sure I got all the things. Oh, we're dead now for sure. <laughs> oh, dang. Oh, it's Meat Monster. I'm pretty sure that's a stock scream sound effect. Okay, let's not take the tablet. Who are we playing as? Margaret. Margaret girl, it's only you. Okay, flashlight can't go off. Lights are on the house, though. The candles are lit. Margaret, did you not hear that girl scream just outside the door? It's locked. Oh, do we have to take our medication? I wonder what the significance of the medication is. I feel like this game is going to end and there's not going to be a lot of closure. <laughs> I don't see how oh, there is medication here. Okay. So only one of the four girls that we've played. I'll put this one with the others. The lock pick is under my pillow. <gasps> Margaret. Margaret's the smart one, dude. Hell yeah. Let's go, Margaret. You've unlocked it. All right, let's go. There was like two weeks worth of medication there. 
Uh, what is that? Is that a rifle? Let's go. Okay, a letter. I left the rifle like we talked about. You have to kill it tonight. The door to the laboratory is under the porch. Yup. Let's go. Oh, let's go. Baby. What? <laughs> what is going on? Anyways. Uh-oh, did I just... Okay, I didn't get stuck. Bang, bang. Oh, uh, dude, I want to try and fire, but I don't at the same time. All right, let's go. Margaret. Okay, I just want to see if the health pack's still here. Okay, the health kit is still here in case we get a damage. I feel fine. Okay, we can't take it or anything. No, we're good. Oh, baby, let's go. Yo, I'm hyped for this now. Now I'm... I was so tense. Now I'm so hype. I don't know what's changed in me. Heck, we got a rifle. Okay, so Clay Law or whatever his name is, I don't know. I I just feel like that's a Diablo name. And uh <laughs> Diablo 2, I'm pretty sure. Was it Clay Law's pincer or something like that? Anyways. Let's go. Okay, we gotta go out the front door. Yo, he cleaned up fast, bro. So yeah, that's uh, I feel like, yeah, these girls are being turned into sacrifices for this machine. Did you get ready? Now, she doesn't have ammunition, so there's like one ch one bullet in that chamber. The candle has been lit. Yes, it has. My heart rate's probably like 120 beats a minute right now. Like, I'm not joking. I'm dying here. I'm excited, but I'm hype, and I'm a little nervous. I'm scared, but I'm ready to go. Blah, blah. Okay, hands on your mouse. Yeah, she's ready for some action. Okay, this is where the door is. It's unlocked now. All right, let's go. Dude, this is the best puppet combo game I've played. What is up with these doors, dude? Okay, first door. Wow, that is an ancient looking door. Can we save now? What is that? No, 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 don't, don't go back. Oh man. I was just trying to investigate that like weird sconce. Okay, well I guess we're here now. Maybe both of them lead downstairs. Just blast this man. Just gonna get ready. Oh, what the hell? They do both go downstairs. Oh, <laughs> old rusty doors, dude. Good sign. Oh, not good. Dude, who has Margaret been talking with? Where are you? Guys, just panic with me, okay? Just silently panic. Anyways, another thing I wanted to... I, can't remember if I mentioned this the first time or the, the last time I was trying to re-record, but I did want to say thank you to you guys uh, who have been like liking and commenting. We are playing this a second time um, because you guys, you know, you guys showed some interest in this and because you guys liked on the video earlier and because you, you guys left it in there. Um, okay. July 24th, 1922. So the last notes we read was like 1919. This is three years later. My suspicions were not only confirmed, but completely validated, but my final discovery last night. The zealots were less than happy to come to realize my line of questioning hadn't ceased even after several more months of my experiments. The hierarchs took to me, keeping me as content with research material as possible, hoping to keep me stimulated, perhaps too much so to ask my questions while the, the radiant heat from my engine slowly cooked away my mind and warped my body. It's quite unfortunate for them that these walls are my walls and that I know where to get where to get anywhere I need to within this matter. This is what led to me to finally listening in on one of their perverse sermons. So this is from the doctor. This is from the doctor. The things these madmen ramble on would give a man pause, but hardly make him listen far beyond that. I've been too far close to these happenings for far too long to not listen though. Listen and understand. They spoke of their great God in the machine that they spoke of how it communicates through their dreams as it had with me, showing them prophetic visions 
visions of the future. They speak of the day the machine is finally fed the blood of the last innocent. That's us. They speak of the blood red sky opening to their lords, the convergence of the two worlds, the legions of our fallen that will return to Herald and the reconnection of the true world to our own and the slaughter that will fall every city of man and that their own bodies will begin ascending in their holy vessels. Everything I've been seeing has been given a new context and I realized that I had been betrayed. Every single thing the entity had told me had been a means to complete this bridge. Cain's terrible staircase to his gods. Were I a weaker man, perhaps my mind would have been so gone to this news means that this news means nothing. But the truth is before my eyes. I will bring the devil to this world if I allow the machine to continue running. The more blood I spill, the closer I get to ending it for all of us. The maniacs seem to have yet to notice how suspicious I've become, which will work to my advantage. It will take no time to disable the devices that power the hellish machine, and hopefully even less time to destroy it. My body may be changing, the same as all the others, but my strength is far from gone. If I can truly dismantle the device, then I may have some chance at salvation. This will take some time, but if I am left to my devices as I have been, then I will have the time to tie up the loose ends that may be left in this research and plan for safe passage of my darling Juliet. Oh God, Juliet, my wife, how I have betrayed her. If she still even resides in this hellhole I have created for us, then I must tell her the truth, seek some kind of forgiveness. Though my acts may have never been as evil as any lunatics, let it never be said that I stopped loving my Juliet. I will save her from this future. I will put an end to all this myself. I just need enough time to put this into motion. Please know, uh, please wait for me, my love. Let me be the man you know I am. To the care of Dr. K.H. Hauser. Okay, so we don't know who Dr. Hauser is. But Edward seems to apparently... Ah, hey, I'm ready. But the doctor seems to have like... Everybody seems to have like kind of like physically been transforming under this... I don't know, this machine. Okay, I don't need that. I can't do anything with that. All right, let's keep going. Oh, I don't like. I don't like how heavy the footsteps sound. Okay, here we go. So, anyways, all the people have been like physically transforming. So that could be the doctor, but it could be somebody else. I don't know. Dude, this is just gonna be a simple ending, I think. And I'm like, I'm freaked out. Like it's gonna be this big complex deal here. Okay, so we know the doctor has been... Okay, so the blood of the innocents. That's us. That's the little girl. That's the girls from the home, right? That's that's definitely us. We're the blood of the innocents. What is this? A control panel activated. Oh, that doesn't seem right. Probably shouldn't be activating things. We should probably be deactivating them all. Maybe... Oh, no. What if he turned it all off? We're down here like trying to break the machine, but it's already broken, and we end up, like, reactivating it. What a twist, eh? What an M. Night Shyamalan twist there. Okay, I can hear that humming. Okay, we're good. I'm playing very gingerly right now. Ready for you. Are you in the cage? I can't go in the cage. Okay, where are we? What are we doing? I don't like walking in on this angle. Okay, we're good, we're good, we're good. So, yeah, we're just learning so much stuff. I wonder if it's the doctor who's just been like completely taken over. Bro! Oh! I'm good, I'm good. A realistic statue. Yeah, guess what, it's not a statue. Oh, man, that's her. I don't know. I don't like that. Don't stab me. Dorothy, are you okay? What the shit? I press R for reload. I'm fine. Yeah. 
Yo, get out of here! What's going on? Yeah, good night! The medication been messing with these girls! Should have just shot her. I knew what was gonna happen. She's gone mad. She dropped something though, right? She dropped the key. Pick it up. Yup. Now there was a health kit somewhere. Okay, let's. I, I don't know. She was. She was watching this door. I guess. I don't know, man. Let's go. Oh, I don't want to go back through the door. Come on. Okay, we're back in here. Oh, we can go this way too. Shit. A large capacitor. I have no use for this. Okay. A chain on the wall. That could be used for some fun. All right, let's go. I've unlocked it from the opposite side. Huh, interesting. So, bro. She was tanking them bullets, dude. Full of knickknacks and textbooks. Nothing useful. So the claw monster is some average crates. Nothing useful inside. Let's we'll keep going this way. Yo, that's a little scary. A hanging chain. Yeah, used for hanging bodies. Bro, I don't like those statues. Oh my gosh. Did we save at any point in time? Like, if I die, are we screwed? I feel like if we die, we're doomed, man. Like, we gotta do this all over again. Oh, okay, now we're back. Oh, we're back up. Okay, so this is where we came through. So now we're back. We've done a full loop through the dungeon at some point. Now we just gotta... Okay, let's see what's through here. There's another door this way we haven't opened up yet. I think we haven't opened this one. <sighs> oh my gosh. That was like a study or something. We've been basically through this whole dungeon and haven't seen nothing. An empty bookshelf. Yeah, I don't know if you noticed, but it's got a safe behind it. And a safe here. Portrait of a man. <laughs> Is it the doctor? I don't know. A bust of a man. He must be obsessed with himself. Maybe. Or maybe the people who was giving him all the research stuff. A letter. Read it. November 23rd, 1918. Wow. Okay, so this is like a few years before now. I've been told that the war has affected many men in interesting and terrifying ways, and perhaps I'm less exceptional than I may have assumed. Sleep comes in small, unaccomplished sessions, leaving me all the more strained in my daily life, though I fear that my exhaustion is far from the main reason for my disconnection and lack of focus. My practice suffers. My research has all but flattened into nothing, and I may truly have nothing to show for it. For all the fears that I've had, my life would end in those trenches. For all the fears I've had that my life would end in those trenches, I feared all the more that Juliet and I would never be able to find the solace we once had together. Through all the frozen nights and the terrifying days, filled with the blood and viscera of my countrymen, it was really the only thing that gave me any hope that this would all amount to something. And what of that motivation completely squandered? Proven to me as fleeting as my own fidelity, I returned from the horrors I witnessed only to feel nothing in the home I left and comfort in the arms of but a girl in my manners and ploy. Oh, what? You cheating on your wife? I can't even begin to hold this weakness against Maria, much less Juliet. But ever since I returned, there's been something in me, something that wasn't there before. That newfound mental peculiarity may very well be responsible. As my sanity first started to prove unreliable as I began to recognize the faces of men that were held together under my knife and the will of God during those horrible days. Some men I'd met along the long voyages to the fronts. Some I knew more personally. Once I spent well past four hours working on the shredded chest of a young man caught in the blast range of artillery. The operations had felt so mundane that it wasn't until I was sure we'd lost the young man I recognized him to be my cousin Garrett. I don't think I had a single tear left for him when they shipped him back here to the family burial grounds beneath my very feet. Why could I not shed a tear in the realization that I had lost a childhood playmate, a family member, a true friend? 
Maybe that was all I needed before I felt the weight of the war pressing down on me and the dreams began. There was no subtlety in the onset of these visions. They came as hard and heavy as one could expect as a fever, but they seemed much different, much more visceral. All I could hear were voices that guided me, guided me towards something that would need to be done to save all of us, a grand solution that would save the lives of every creature. These sprawling growths of belief started to seep into my waking moments, and they've been drawn back with me to my home. I want to lose this, but I feel the voices are only stronger here. They've driven my madness to places I cannot stand to see myself go. They've drawn me to take the body of a young woman, to betray the only future I wanted with the only woman I wanted it with. God help me, Juliet. Please forgive me one day. I need to find something to satisfy these voices. I need to return to my studies and save whoever it is that must be saved. I need to sleep. January 13th. So a couple months later, uh, we get this long and I can still barely look at my beloved wife and her face. I draw away from her every time I need her the most, as I know I do not deserve her. Maria continues to concern her Maria continues to concern herself with me at every turn, and as much as I do care for the girl, I fear she must not understand my true feelings for our deed. So I hide now in the laboratory I've made of our old cellar. For all the sniveling and self-loathing I've done in my self-appointed isolation, I've begun to work especially hard on this newly spreading disease from the southern of Spain. It's created a key focus on my work throughout the days, maybe even giving my dreams something to focus on. Perhaps this is the cure and salvation my weary mind needs. Maybe this is how I'll save us all. <clears throat> my research has been progressing as slow as one could imagine it would be for such a new field of study, but perhaps this is where my old dreams may be trying to aid me once more. It seems strange, perhaps, to give new credence to my own delusions even if I simply try to excuse these actions as a feeding, a growing hold that exhaustion has been creating. I think my dreams may actually know something I do not. Upon researching some further notes that left by my grandfather, I found what appears to be a type of blueprint that has come remarkably close to the very structures I've seen in my waking delusions. The rational part of me wants nothing more than to place my knowledge in this device as some distant memory of having seen these some blueprints in my medical studies for university, but the honest part of me knows better. My visions are becoming too prophetic for me to believe them, the simple soft-headedness of the war-shaken mind. There must be a reason why they've become so much clearer since my return to the manor. I must continue delving into the catacombs below where the old notes were held. Every indication is telling me that the remnants of the machine are somewhere on the grounds. And Grandfather's old journals strongly suggest, suggest that he had them crafted for some kind of cure. What it truly does or how it could be expected to work is far beyond anything in my own field of studies, but if I continue to follow all the development of his notes, perhaps it would all work out in the end. The more bizarre and detached my research seems to become, the more clearly I can see the dreams again and the clearer images they start to make. I see hints of a design, something that seems utterly alien to me, but at the same time it has a familiarity to it, like something I've seen in a much deeper, softer memories. One's faded deep into the back of my mind. I just need to listen a bit closer. Tonight, I'll hear something clearer. March 1st, 1919. I think I've come to realize what's been asked of me. All right. So, uh, again, a lot of reading. Uh, hopefully, you guys are into it. Various uh, science equipment, nothing useful. Okay. Ooh, that's kind of cool. Look at the engravings on that. Table of brains. It looks like they were being studied. <laughs> homo sapien. Okay. Well, hopefully he's studying homo sapien brains. I mean, well, I shot a bottle of brains that didn't blow up, so had to check. Okay. Large capacitor. Oh, what is that? That don't look good. A shelf with hands and other body parts. Oh, it's probably just like a missing texture out of the game or something that caused it to light up green. Okay. We have another thing here. I don't know if we should be lighting this on or not, but that's two. Oh my god. Something is coming. Oh! What the freak? Shoot it! Shoot it! Margaret! Are we hiding under the table? Oh no, we're hiding. Oh my god. 
What's it got on its head? Dude, we're done for. I don't want to go out. Okay, we're five out of five. I don't want to. I don't know, man. Oh, what the hell? Okay, where do we go? We've done every. I think we've looked everywhere, right? Hey, dude, I don't even want to run. If I run, I feel like my anger. Okay, we didn't go down this way. Bro, don't give me that camera angle. I can't see what's coming. <laughs> okay. Here we go. Oh, I think this is new for us. Oh, that looks great. It's an operating table. First aid kit. Heal myself. Yup. Stretcher. Oh, there's something. Oh, no, there's something behind this. Oh, my God. A hanging corpse. Oh, my Jesus. Well, there's another control panel here. So that's three control panels we've turned on. That's, I don't know. Like I said, I'm pretty sure we've been most of the places here. Can you give me an auto save, please? Okay, I don't know where we're going. I'm sorry, I'm quiet. This is freaking me out. He's already, he's around a corner somewhere. And the wife, she mentioned a humming, right? She mentioned that there was this like wild humming. Oh, we haven't been here either. Oh, there's another one too. There's a cage. That's awesome. An electric cage, the power is off. It's possibly used for experiments. Large broken test tube. That's great. A public address system. Attention all, this is the estates. Ruth, if you've already taken your tablet, please report the dining hall. We prepared a new task for you. Uh, I feel like I shouldn't have turned that on. Who's recording these names? Okay, we're going to go down this hallway here. This is a... Uh, Pretty bright. I feel like this is the room that we probably had to take out the girl in. Dorothy. I think we fought Dorothy here. I think we fought and killed Dorothy in this room. No, this is all new. Dude, I'm lost. Whoa, is this the machine? What? Is that a, what is that? It's a first aid kit. No, I don't need you. Large capacitor. Okay, now we're making some progress here. A letter. May 3rd, 1921. The research has progressed at a rapid pace. There is no shortage of work to be done and no shortage of volunteers. Though primitive and being able to be fully communicated its continued direction to me through the seeming possession of the fresher corpses that have come as a byproduct of our work and the living hosts have begun to show somewhat different reactions. Symptoms similar to mine from when I originally began the work are common in nearly every one of them. But the longer their direct exposure to the pylons and the energy is, the more detached they become, they seem to become mentally. Their reactions seem sharper, but cognitive functions seem to dumb down to much simpler, more passive series of reactions. They have no problem identifying orders, motions of actual threats, um, but they frequently seem to forget the answers to questions that they knew just days ago. Some of them, when held in the effects for even longer, began displaying signs of violent mania, often lashing out and attacking other subjects or often to their misfortune, me. Yeah, you don't want to attack me, baby. <laughs> I do not like wasting any life, much less the life of a subject. But once this mania takes hold, there hasn't been any observable way to bring them back to any kind of lucidity and certain adjustments uh, must be made to ensure the safety of others. Troubling as these effects are, their mental faculties are, the symptoms themselves are getting far worse in other regards. The longer a living subject is exposed to the radiating energy of the pylons, the more their physical attributes begin to reflect this strain. Many show signs of sun-damaged skin, though the flesh itself seems to thicken and swell, some with boils, and some simply resembling others close to animal hide. Often their limbs will start to show signs of distortion, uh, but seemingly no awareness to the subject itself. 
This is also true with many other changes to their physical features, be it in their facial feature distorting or some increased mass to their overall bodies. The entity feigns some kind of ignorance to these physical and mental abnormalities when I attempt to probe further on the effects of the engine. But why I am starting to see a detect a familiar pattern between these cases is leaving me with some kind of increased concern. As fascinating as the progress is, it's creating an uncertainty that wasn't in me before. How long must I wait before the intentions of the machine and mysterious designers? Their closed lips on the subject have always left me with more excitement than concern. But with the increasing show of these mutations caused by it and the degenerative cognitive defects that are occurring, I can't help but feel that this was part of their plan. Letting me work on the machine until those same effects come back on me. Perhaps this cult has more, uh, has come to live in my family home, understands more about this being than they led me to believe. So yeah, so basically we just know the doctor's been doing some wicked experiments. Um, these pylons apparently are messing people up. Uh, and that's all we really know. Uh, I don't know where we're going from here though. Can we... Oh, what the hell? I don't know where he is. Oh, get away! Get away! Get away! Get away! Get away! Get away! Oh my sh! He moves so fast! Oh my god! Okay, kite him, shoot him. Kite him, shoot him. Okay, holy, you guys. Oh, come on. Okay, reload, go, go, go. Kite him, shoot him, kite him, shoot him. Okay, we got a couple shots into this man. Are we on ammo? We got one more shot. Oh my gosh, dude. He won't go down. Okay, reload. Get going, girl. Margaret. Bro, how many shots is this thing gonna take? Dude, I've shot this thing like 10 times. You gotta go down this thing. He went down! What the? <gasps> I killed it. Yeah, I killed it! Dude, why has it got a freaking bag on its head? Anyways, I went to hit this switch. Turn on the machine? No, I thought we were here to turn off the machine. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, what do we do? We just open the portal to hell? It's beautiful. Welcome. A strange machine. It seems to facilitate a force field. It will suck at force field. Oh, jeez! Oh, no! I didn't mean to shoot it! Hide the corner! I can't get out, right? But, oh, we're doomed. Can we get out? I can't open it. Yet. The door is locked. Oh my dude! Right, I'm behind the corner. Auto save. There's more? All right, it blew up. Machine done broke. But we go deeper down. Y'all, there might have to be a part three to this. This has been, we've been recording this forever. All right, we're gonna come back for a part three. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, thank you guys so much for watching. As always, huge shout out to all the real ones out there liking, sharing, comment, subscribing. Don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe on this. Uh, I love your faces. Again, you guys looking for the part three, let me know. I'll see you guys soon. Be well, stay awesome, do great things. I love your faces. Bye guys.